Good morning, Inspired Church. Thank you for uh, attending our virtual service today. Uh, this is the this 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 is the last virtual service or the last service uh, for the year 2021, and it's been a year. And uh, it's been I was driving today, and I was thinking about it. Uh, I'm I'm really grateful to God. Like from August, because we planted uh, last year, 2020. August. So from August to August, it's been August to August, it's been a one year. So we've had a full calendar year from January to December. And so I'm, I'm excited that God has preserved Inspired Church in this time. We're able to still uh, um, uh, uh, give out the gospel and encourage. And I hope I, I hope we still encouraging you all uh, and inspiring anyone. I mean, everyone uh, who's who's uh, taking the opportunity to join us. Uh, for worship service, either virtually or in person, and so we are, we're very thankful for that. What and a then, journey! Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a blessing. So we, I wish we, you know, what we probably need to do just do like a you and I just kind of get together, get somebody, maybe get somebody to interview us, and just kind of like there's some behind the scenes things that happen. <laughs> and not just, make it up. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's re it's ridiculous, like some of the things that happen behind the scene, but. Nonetheless, God is great, and we've been. Uh, and He is and faithful. He, yeah. He is faithful. Yeah. Like we, you know, I will share this. Uh, 2021, I can say that the Lord has shown Himself to be faithful, and that we have learned what it means to persevere. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's to really press good. in. It, it doesn't matter. You still go in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Why? Because He called us to come out. Right. Amen. Amen. So anyway, grab your Bible, grab your pen, your paper, your highlighter. Uh, invite a friend, tag somebody, uh, you know, what's that? Invite somebody, share, share the video, uh, I mean, share, yeah, share this, uh, the service. If you know someone who may be interested and need a little pick me up, need to be inspired, uh, share it with them. Uh, whether you're watching us on YouTube or you're watching us on Facebook or our website, uh, yeah, make sure you do all those things and prepare your heart so that we can go into this yeah. conversation about this last sermon series for 2021. Uh, as titled Birthright Born for Destiny. Yes. Yep. Amen. Focus our hearts on the on the word. Yeah. Would you like for me to read the word of the day? Uh read and then pray. All right. So the scripture that came to my heart, not only are we in the last Sunday, but this is the Sunday after Christmas. Gotcha. Uh so that's a blessing. And so uh during the birthright journey it was different verses that the Holy Spirit gave me just to share. And so the last one that I would like to share is in Luke chapter 1, and it's verse 37 and 38. And again, Hold on. you said Luke chapter 1? Mm-hmm. Right. Luke chapter 1, verse 37 and 38. Okay. And so I am going to read it out the NLT, and then I would like to share it out of the King James Version. And it says, uh, for the word of the Lord will never fail. And then verse 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And the angel left her. My favorite is the King James Version. And it says, um, for with God, nothing is impossible. Right. Uh, Mary said, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Mm-hmm. Uh, how encouraging is that? Uh, the word came to pass in her life. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to minister on that, but that is just what a joy. She got to experience. Why are you not going to minister on that? Okay. I'm sorry, because it seems like I'm going in. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but she had a chance to experience the promise of uh, of God to her, like she got to hold the promise. This is who they had been anticipating and looking forward to, the Messiah, the promise, the Savior of the world. She had a chance to actually carry him, carry the promise, birth the promise, right. experience the promise, and then guess what? She was able to then give her life back to the promise. Yeah. It's just amazing, but that's what this season is all about. That the word of God, when God does not give out or say a word haphazardly or recklessly, mm-hmm. he said exactly what he meant, and he brought it to pass. 
with God, nothing is impossible. Yeah. With God, all things are possible, right. especially the word that he says. Right. Amen. So whatever the word is that the Lord has given you, uh, we still have a couple of days left. Do not give up on God. Amen. Mm -hmm. He will come through and do just what he said. Mm -hmm. Don't get it twisted according to what you said. He said he would do just what he said. So if you don't have a, uh, a word to hold on to, get in this Bible and find a word to hold on to for yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. And watch him come through. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you now for this time, this discussion that Patrick and I, Pastor Patrick and I will share. We thank you so much for the promise that you have given us through your son. You did not fail, and he is the promise of us all. Lord, when we were sick in our sin, sick soul, God, you came and saved us. How about that? Thank you so much for coming through. Uh, as we go through uh, our discussion, we ask you, Heavenly Father, that you will have your way, that it, whatever it is that you will have for us to say, to share, uh, whatever it is, that it will come out with clarity, uh, with boldness, with confidence, with assurance, uh, that our souls will continue to be redeemed and that other souls will be saved as well. We thank you for victory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in the sermon series, one again, one of the things we were trying to do, and I'm going to read it, um, it's, it's about helping us all understand that there are certain things in this life and in this in this world that we have a right to, uh, particularly things that we can do that we can do something about. So we can't worry about what other people what other people do will say or do, but there are certain things like the joy and the peace and the patience and kindness and temperance and meekness and faith, like those things that we can have something that we can do about. Uh, we can go into, you know, the works of the flesh and the, the works of the flesh and those things that God said, this is a flesh work. We have uh, within us the power not to do those things. And so there are certain things that we, and, and, and that's, that's, that's one of the, the birthrights uh, I think we have. Um, what was the note? I have, a, I have something to say when you said about the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. That is a birthright. Right. That is a right that we have by being born again to now experience the fullness of love, right. the fullness of joy, the fullness of peace, the fullness of goodness, mm -hmm. the fullness of meekness. Mm -hmm. We have the opportunity, the fullness of self-control, right. the good. fullness of gentleness. Like we get to experience it at its apex. Right. With God. Yes. With God. Yes. Which makes all things possible. Yes. O according to, according to, and within His will. And it, it, look, He said, "Be it unto me according to Thy word." Right. And when the Spirit of God is living inside of us, guess what? That fruit of the result of the Spirit being planted in us mm -hmm. and our hearts, just like the Savior was planted in Mary's womb, mm -hmm. the same promise and birthright we have is that that fruit, the result of it, mm -hmm. will surely show up. Right. Amen. You can know, not, <laughs> I, I'm kind of swerving, but it's a discussion. But th the way you know that someone is filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, is that love is going to be present, right. amen. You can't counterfeit it. Right. Well, and the, the fruits will be, the fruit of the Spirit will make themselves manifest. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the Spirit uh, will make itself manifest anyway. So here, here we go, because this is what I want to say, because I, I want everyone to know, or I, I really want to encourage you all to get with God to find find out what is it, what is your birthright? Like, what is it that God has for you that he wants you to accomplish, accomplish in the earth for his glory? And that takes getting with God, not going to the, you know, the, the man of God and, and, and talking about what he see and God's like, no, what does God show you through his word Here's the key. Through his, through his relationship, through the relationship that you have with him, mm -hmm. that he will begin to, he will confirm. The man of God will confirm. The man of God will confirm what God has done in your, what God wants to do in your life, Amen. right? Amen. But I need us to be all the more in tune with God first, building a relationship to fulfill whatever that purpose is that God has for you, even if the purpose is no more 
than to reflect or mirror the spiritual personality and the moral likeness of Yahweh. Remember, I told you you can go to Galatians 5, and you can go to Ephesians 5. Those where I feel like some of those moral likeness and uh, spiritual personality, especially if you go to Ephesians 5, it's going to talk about all the things. Talk, it goes into dear children, don't do these things, all right? But as you look at those things he's ask, asking us not to uh, imitate, the, 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 the first thing is imitate God. So whatever in Ephesians 5, he's saying, don't do these things. The opposite is what we would do uh, to make sure that we uh, mirror or re, uh, uh, reflect the moral likeness of God. Anything? Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Now. I have a joke. Okay. Joke. No. I just write. Shemika, Shemika, <laughs> she wants to just for this festive Christmas holiday. She got a few jokes she's going to tell it's in between. It's just to break the ice. In between. It's just to talking. break the ice. Okay. It's a discussion. Amen. And it's my birthright to tell it. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Why didn't Rudolph get a good report card? That's how you say it. All right. Go ahead. Say it again. Why didn't Rudolph get a good report card? Why? Because he went down in history. But <laughs> I know, I know. He went down in history. <laughs> you, you missed a little bit the extra. But anyway, gotta love it. All right, so here we go. Here's the other thing. So here's the thing. So remember now, during the conversation, we try to re re reiterate and. Uh, uh, um, focus on points we really want you to hone in on. Mm -hmm. So one of the other things is our decisions today, our decisions today, and, they need, and I need you to think about what decisions are you making today? You know what I'm saying? What actions are you taking, taking today yeah. that either you want to create something to change in your life, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? If it's your health, like what decisions are you going to make mm -hmm. today for your health? If it's Y'all check this out. I, anyway, so you know about your 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 relationships with your children, with your parents, with your loved ones, with your family, with God. More more importantly, with God. A lot of people want to get closer to God, and they only want to use it. And y'all know this is redundant. Y'all only they only want to use prayer, but no one gets in the Word. You know, like man, I got in, I prayed this morning. I ain't have time to get in my Word. Yes, you do have time to get in your Word. You just have to make the time to get in your word because ultimately when you start making your request or your prayer your prayer request I can't really like I don't know what God would do but it's easier for God to answer the prayer when you have a relationship with him and that's with anybody you know if before you make a request start a relationship and it makes it easy for them to 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 answer the request so our decisions today our actions today must become a positive catalyst for our neighbors, our family, our children, our parents, and time for our legacy, and ultimately for the kingdom of God. In other words, in time for our legacy, you're going to teach your children, who are going to teach their children, who then will teach their children, who then will teach their children. And let's say you you grew up in a household that's not a that, that's not a believing household, like they don't believe in Christ, and you decided today, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. I realize I see things, I'm looking at the stars and the galaxies and the moons and whatever, and I know there's something greater, and then you make this, that you go on this quest to find out what, what is this God, who is this God, and then you find out that this, this magnificent God manifests himself in the flesh as, as Christ Jesus, and now you begin to develop this relationship with Christ Jesus, like, whoa, 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 this is it. So I make my resolve to accept Jesus Christ I believe that God raised from the dead, mm -hmm. and I confess that he is Lord. Therefore, I am saved. And then I teach my children in the manner, who then teach his, their children in the manner. Mm -hmm. who then, and now you've changed the tra trajectory of your whole lineage by the decision you made today the to accept Jesus Christ. And the action. And the action. The decision and the action. Amen. It's faith and works. Faith. You put works with your faith, and you put faith with your works. But it, it don't take works to be saved. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But works should follow it should show the up. faith. Right. Yeah, works should show up. Fruit. Yeah. It right. should show up. You know, that that's action. Yeah. You know? 
Amen. Amen. Um, uh, and, and again, I, I want to uh, just bring out the point that that is a birthright. Being able to teach is a birthright. Being mm-hmm. able to change the trajectory, that's a birthright. Being able to sow a seed, that's a birthright. You, the, the, the word of God said, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, harvest. That is a guarantee. So now that we know that that is so, then guess what? We get up and we exercise our right to mm-hmm. participate in this whole scheme of life and living. Amen. Right. So I know that nothing that I do is uh, haphazard or reckless. Well, let me go back. Sometimes it can be if you <laughs> if you are not born again. And sometimes when we are born again, when we are not uh, learned or experienced, we'll still do like things. That so, so let me say this: if we're not following after the Spirit. Amen. So, we'll, we'll, we, 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 it, it, that's good. If, if not we're being not led after by the, the Spirit, spirit mm-hmm. then you, by default, are experiencing the works of the flesh. Correct. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, this, again, that is a birthright that we have to be able to experience making a decision mm-hmm. to being able to be engaged in that action. We are participating with the Holy Spirit by what? Making the decision to walk with Him, to be led by Him. Yeah. And that's the right that we have being born again. So so the definition of birthright is any right or pri- privilege to which a person is entitled by birth. Mm-hmm. Any right or privilege that anyone who's entitled by birth. So for those of us, when we are born again, I love it. The, the moment we are born again and we are birthed into the spirit or we're birthed into the family of God Amen. by faith, at that point, we have a right to, we have a privilege and a right to worship. We have a privilege and a right to have peace. We have a privilege and a right to uh, uh, to make godly decisions toward God. We have a right and a privilege like to, to uh, 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 make good plans and, and hard work yes. for the glory of God. We have a right and a privilege to take communion. We have a right and a privilege to walk circumspect. We have a right and a privilege privilege to do all these things so that God can be glorified. We have a right to minister the word of God. You don't have to have a title. You ain't got to have no pulpit, no Come camera, on, no man. nothing. Yeah. Just get out there and tell people about what God do- has done for you. Amen. And, and, and ask and talk to people about what Christ is doing. Like, you just you don't need no certificate. Just just go out. There's plenty of people out there who will never step yeah, foot in I church. Say, yeah, you, you will be able to touch who we can't. Correct. Or what uh, another... A pastor or minister cannot because they are in your sphere of influence. Correct. Amen. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, hard work. Mm-hmm. And so uh, here lately, I have been uh, journaling and writing more. And so one of the um, one of the most recent journal entries that I wrote about was uh, moving from hard work to heart work. Good. And when it becomes uh, heart work, that what used to be hard work mm-hmm. becomes gentle and mm-hmm. easy work. Mm-hmm. You know, like, is it sometimes is, is it hard to do? Sometimes what God asks you to do, it is when your heart is still hard. That's good. But when your heart, your heart softens and it becomes pliable, then the Lord can have His way, and then it's it's easy. You mm-hmm. know, it's easy to bring forth. Mm-hmm. And again, we can join in with Mary and say, "Be it unto me according to Thy word." While her heart was so soft. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Got so. something there? All right. So here's another thing I wanted to bring out, and, I, and, and I'm bringing these things out because I want you, I want you to remember these things. I want you to hold on to these things moving forward in your life. All right. Here we go. Check this out. We are tailor made for an expected end through the process of action changes and functions that take put, that take into consideration the ups and downs the ins and outs of life bringing it all together for the glory of God now remember mm-hmm. so, so this kind of going goes with with Esther and what she was mm-hmm. going through and it goes with Joseph and what he was going through uh the 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 events surrounding Christ's birth and happened to hide and come back and you know crucifixion like all those things we look at our lives, and so if y'all remember, I was talking about, so this, so we could talk about a process, and the process has to deal with action, uh, functions, and changes. And, 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 and the action or the process, the process happens because it has 
going forward, it has an expected end. There's something that I want to I want to come out. It's a result. So what's the result I'm looking for? Okay, well, this is the result. Okay, well, here's the process. Here's the actions. Here's the function. Here are the changes that have to happen, that, that, that uh, have to happen in order for the change within your body, the change within your finances, the change within your relationship, the change in your mood and your personality. These are things that have to happen if this is what you want, if this is the result that you want out of life. I love it. There are ingredients. There are good. There are ingredients and there is a process mm -hmm. to everything. Everything on earth, there it will require some seed, which you could say that the ingredients is a seed or mm -hmm. are seeds now. Um, and then you can you can you can expect if you do the process right. to receive that tree. If right. you want an apple tree, the the first step you need is what uh, uh, apple seed. You need soil. You mm -hmm. need sun. You need water. You need space. Guaranteed, those would be considered ingredients. Right. Then you have to get up and do the work. You join in the process. That means I may have to get up a little early. I have to, I have to uh, check the temperature of the soil. Like it's a whole lot of things to go through the process of gardening. <laughs> but at any rate, when you do, when you trust the process, when you go through it and you have everything that is needed, you can almost ninety nine point nine 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 percent expect that tree and i say that because it's other things that can happen in life Correct. a storm may come or something may happen where you know it may not come to pass but it won't be because you didn't do your part as right. far as ensuring that the, you followed the process and, and let's, let's let's take that point and <laughs> and, and do it with relationships mm -hmm. like you can't make a decision on how you know, your children, your spouse, your friends, Mercy. your co-workers. Like, I can't do anything about what they decide to do. Correct. I can do something about how I, what I do in the beginning, in the beginning, and the uh, the choice I make and how I respond to whatever they do. I like that. But I at least, when I'm giving advice to people who are on the verge of, of divorce, I always tell them, you do everything you know you need to do to make it work. I, I can't worry about the other stuff, but you do exactly what you need to do. I never tell them to do it, but I just like, make sure that at the end of it, if that happens, you've done all you can to make sure that, that you've did what was necessary to make the marriage work. Or, you know, in terms of the doctor say, don't do this. I've done everything I can to make sure my health improves, whatever the case may be. Um, and again, so we can talk about those ingredients, these events that happen in our lives, you know, if we take the events individually, man, it, it hurts, you know what I'm saying? The divorce, it hurts, the, the losing of a loved one, that, that hurt, uh, losing a job, that hurt, losing, you know what I'm saying, a friendship, that, like, those things hurt, but if you take all of your life, you know what I'm saying, you lost this friend, but you gained this one, or, you Game know, three. You, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you, 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 you got hurt at this church, but you found a new, a new church family. Like take, when you take the ingredients individually, they, they all like, you know, sometimes some is a bitter taste to it. Some is too sweet, but if you put it all together and you mix it all together, it brings about something, something beautiful. Something new. Yeah. Something brand new. Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you don't. But, yeah, 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 you're right. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I meant, to, I meant to cut you off. But, you know, you mentioned about uh, the different ingredients and the different things. And, look, these are sometimes things that are just beyond your control. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Esther. She was being groomed for greatness. And how the exile is not pleasant. Mm -hmm. You know, leaving your hometown, that's not pleasant. Right. Especially when, you know, our hometown is like our home. We know the city. We know the ins and outs. And, like, we just... We grow with it. Yeah. Uh, our family, you know, you, your, your first introduction is to your dad and your mom, and it's like they're gone. Like yeah. everything that she knew, it was, you know, it was gone. And yeah. so, you know, she had to uh, humble her, humble herself to her her cousin Mordecai. Like that's a whole nother process, you mm -hmm. know. And she had to grow to respect him. 
but by the same token, he was grooming her for where she was going, and they had no idea that it would be an all call to be into the Persian palace. They had wow. no idea, but she was being groomed the whole time, and it seemed like you know, no one, I believe, okay, that they couldn't have imagined that she was that all of this was preparing her for her moment she as was, queen when she was baby Esther. Yeah. yeah, that's not, they didn't see that when she was no, baby Esther. No, uh -huh. no, 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 no. And so those are the things, even when we come, when we consider our life, like you may, you ready? I'm okay. just thinking about, because just think about Esther losing her parents. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a loss. That's a real, like, I'm, I've loss. lost both parents. Mercy. That's like, that's a, God, I wish I had said that. It's okay. That's a, that's a different, like, it's a, it's a loss. And you don't think, okay, man, I lost both of my parents. Now I got to be raised by this, this cousin of mine, this older cousin, and he has his way of doing things, and I miss my mama, and I miss my daddy. Like, you just don't know that you're going to be the queen that's in place. Again, both her and Joseph are in, in palace places to save the people. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Joseph did like when like even though he was the his daddy did something that father shouldn't do. He had a favorite child and they created jealousy amongst the brothers, but still he didn't. That's not, like so when he even when he saw the, the things bowing down, I I don't I'm not he sure he's no not idea. thinking palace. No. He's probably thinking, man, I'm gonna be the CEO of the family business. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. But not he gonna palace. be king of the sheaves. Mercy. <laughs> I know, random. Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> it's random, but hey, that was the business they had. Sheep and sheaves. Right. He would be Joseph King of Sheaves. I know what I know. Okay. Well, Patrick, wait and listen to this. Listen to this. Now, you, now, if you all remember when, when, uh, when I was ministering uh, uh, about Esther and how she, oh, I hate when I lose my, lose my train of thought. But she was, um, so she was going through her process or whatever. I mentioned about her having a great attitude, mm -hmm. right? And so while she That's was good. going through that, That's good. she had to maintain poise and attitude. And I would venture to say that she had a humble spirit. Yeah. And why do I say that? Because the Lord said that he would exalt those in due season when their spirit is humble. Right. Because it's many that have gone through the loss of all of, you know, what, what, what has has transpired and happened to Esther, like you have, like you sitting here and you saying, like you know, you you don't have both your parents, but and it's not to say you're not a king, amen. Okay. <laughs> amen. <laughs> but my thing is, is that you just don't know what where that would where that would lead because in some cases, if your attitude is not humble. If your attitude is not right, mm -hmm. it could lead you in toward a whole nother trajectory mm -hmm. away from God. Why? Because mm -hmm. you prideful. Like it's many people that's been in that situation that their spirit became resistant to God. Like right. they were angry at God and they just didn't want to have anything else to do with him. But instead, she held true to hopefully whatever if her parents, um, I don't read the, the scripture doesn't say how long that she was with her father and her mother but they came from a very rich legacy okay. um and we we can tell that through how mordecai taught her and um and so yeah it showed up the lord showed up and though his name was never mentioned mm. there was never a pronoun or anything ever stated in this book yeah. but his presence his That's providential deep. and sovereignty is seen clearly yeah. through her life and i know hold on and my leg so my, I guess I'd be like, <laughs> go ahead. And guess what? I want you to be encouraged to know that even though That's you good. may not feel or sense or hear or you know you didn't have that rich legacy like uh, Esther had, that does not mean that God is not involved. Amen. If you are breathing breath, Amen. Guess, guess what? You didn't just fall out the sky. You're not a big blob of ooze. You're not a result of that. Your creator put his breath inside of you, and he is now giving an all call through me, just like he called all the, uh, the king called all the Persian uh, young ladies to, uh, to come and be queen, to be, you know, to a new, new queen. He is calling all of his sons and daughters mm -hmm. that he created. If you are on this earth, 
He wants you to be born again. Yeah. Amen. That's real life. If you don't have him today, you just existing. You just going through trying to figure it out. Don't lean any longer to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you today to tell the Lord, yes, don't try to figure it out. Don't try to figure out how he came about and do do do. Just believe. I'm thinking about the Polar Express, one of my favorite Christmas movies. Just believe. Don't lose that. Uh, they, the world call it that magic. I'm saying don't lose that miracle of believing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Tell the Lord yes and come on to him today. Because guess what? You will be a queen in some state of fashion. You will be a king in some state of fashion. It may not be a Persia. It may not be of the United States. Well, we're not even under that, mm -hmm. you know, that type of government. But guess what? You will reign where the Lord has called you to reign. Amen. Right. So, so the, the thing that I always try to, I, I try to encourage people through, through the trials, mm -hmm. because a lot of time we preach these messages or we preach these messages about acknowledging God and Him directing your path, and it's always with this, this you know, you know, touchdown type of I don't know. <laughs> This, uh -huh. this, this it's big, like it ends in a. It's always just this big, great thing that happens, and we never, we never, we never uh, warn you all. I thought I could say warn. Oh, we never, we never tell you about to anticipate that even the path that God gives you may not be the path that uh, that emotionally that we feel like that's the way we want to go. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like losing your parents, losing your. Doing yes, losing your parents, uh, losing your home, uh, losing your identity. What does that sound like? Like losing a lot of things Mercy. that we, we you grew up with, but God was still present. Hallelujah. In in the in the that's so good. God was still. I was trying to find. I'm trying to get real deep. But God was still present. There was something still there in the losing process. You know what I'm saying? I lost all the stuff, but God was still there. And that's what I need you to know, even as you go through, and if you are here, you're going to go through, even if you are, if you're a child of God or not a child of God, you are going to go through. Yes. I would rather you be a part of the family of the kingdom of God and have someone yes. to walk through with you. Because everybody's going to, all of us are going to experience rain. All of us are going to experience a storm. All of us are going to experience persecution of some sort no matter what side you decide to go on or you choose, but it would be beneficial for you in this life and in the next to you for you to choose Christ as your Savior so that the Spirit of God can lead you through these things, these trials, these wilderness, you know, these dry places in your life so he can get you to the next uh, uh, oasis of life so that you can drink uh, in the Lord. So, random but on point. Okay. I remember when I was younger in elementary school, this is when we used to have recess, amen? Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> you would, uh, it would be one person that would be the captain and they get to choose, right? Mm -hmm. Well, many of us knew who was not a strong, who was not strong at uh, kickball and we would not want to be picked to be on the losing team. You know what I mean? <laughs> so to me, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God are like that. Like, who would just sign up for a losing team, Correct. you know? And if you do end up finding yourself, you know, being on a losing team, you do want somebody who can coach you to greatness, amen? Mm -hmm. So, like, God did take us. We were misfits, amen? Right. And so now mm -hmm. he has made, he has, he has worked with us and coached us to excellence that even if we lost that game, we can be coached in character so that we can be prepared for the next uh, win. And then I thought about something else. Mm -hmm. When you when you was talking about uh, that life may not always give you, uh, you know, it may, it may give you some 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 pitfalls or some right. whatever. Anyway, I thought about football. I know that this is random. Just ride with me, Patrick. So you know, uh, everybody that's on a football team want to make the touchdown, right? Like every, so when you, <laughs> Patrick stop. So on a football team, the 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 goal is to win the game. Right. Right. Okay. So you got you got team A. <laughs> Patrick, stop it. You got team A. That's like, yeah, we are gonna win. We are gonna get X amount of touchdown. But they may feel go their way to a win. <laughs> <laughs> they may 
can't just do it three that's true. in. I'm just saying. That's true. That's right. That's I true. can remember. I can remember uh, which team, which team it was, mm -hmm. but I can remember that they just kept make, making field, field goals. goals. But they never made a touchdown. True. So, like, you may be that player that can just kick that ball through the what, – what is the thing called, Patrick? Goal post. The goal post. <laughs> look, if you can kick it through the goal post, look, you be the best goal post kicker ever. Amen? Goal post kicker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, goal post. No, no, it's the good. We ride with that one. Write that down. But text you know, text to somebody. You know, Who's like, your goal post kicker? <laughs> If you are the quarterback, I mean, you play your part, and that's like right. being a member of the body. If you know that you can pray, you pray. If you know that you that's can good. encourage, you encourage. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't come to pass. We want God's will to be done, but we want to know that we did our part in ensuring, ensuring that we were, we were, we were on the trajectory to win. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't come, then guess what? I still left it all out. Right. I still pour it all out. Yeah. And so a lot of times people often say, well, how you know, how you know that this is real and how you know that so? Have you ever seen them? How you ever look? All I know is I don't want to get to the end and not get in. Amen? Right. It, mm, Go ahead. Mm, if it is a heaven, and I believe by, by faith and through the word of God that, that it is one. I do not want to be right there on the cusp of sin and can't get in. Right. Ooh. I, I saw a post that said that that the post said that you know I'm not gonna say that. Here, here's the thing, <laughs> no, because that's wrong. Yeah, okay. you want you want excess. I'm gonna do it there because I because I, I that would have been that would have been kind of kind of messy. So I want to make one more point. You want me to, you that I'm gonna make you make the last point. You want me to do another joke before you go? You do one more joke. All right. You know um, what what I want to say? Oh. I know how. I know how this everyone. Is our Christmas present to you all. <laughs> Wait a minute, I really have to. Before I say that, one say, right. how much did Santa pay for his sleigh? How much did Santa pay for his sleigh? Mm -hmm. How much? Nothing. It was on the house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Pastor Pat. It's, it's how you say it. <laughs> Nothing. It was on the house. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Last one. Okay, and then I then the last one is, I know how everyone's Christmas ended on yesterday. How? With a Y. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. All right. Thank you. You can send me your card. <laughs> so last point. <laughs> This last one I got. Who go to church to get a tummy? Okay. I don't know. They, they do a lot. It's of the word and, and laughter. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. All right. Here's 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 the last point. Check this out. Here we go. So again, we want you to get to know your destiny. We hope everyone meets their destiny. Even if you if you don't know what your purpose or you don't know what your destiny is, here's what I want to say to you. You may not know. You may not know the destination of your destiny. But I need you to know the direction of your destiny. Mm -hmm. Remember now, you Stay may not know right mm -hmm. the destination of your destiny, but I need you to at least know the direction of your destiny. Remember, Abram said, God told Abram, go to a place I'll show you. Like, well, where is that place? When you get there, I'll let you know. But he at least knew. He had to trust the process. He, had, he, he knew a a, a direction to go in. Look, he had to head in Christ, amen. He had to head in Jesus. <laughs> it was a far off. It was a far off. Okay. No, I'm gonna give you that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's why I need you guys. I need you guys to, to, to figure out what's the direction. Remember, two emotions I believe help us with that. That what brings you the most joy and what irritates you the most. Yeah. Like that can kind of help you what your destination or what your purpose may be in life. And, and work at those things. And, and your purpose may not be your profession. It would be a, a great thing if it was, but but it may not be. But sometimes we can have a profession and we can make good money and we still feel empty. That's because we're not really operating on our purpose. So allow your profession to help fund the opportunity for you to fulfill whatever purpose God has for you. Yeah, and listen, I was thinking, I was thinking uh, over the past week, that many of the opportunities that I have been afforded in life to mm -hmm. find my purpose, 
came as a result of volunteering. Just That's sign deep. up. That's deep. Just That's sign deep. up and show up. They missed that one. That was deep. You may not get paid for, but I'm telling you, every single door that I think back over my uh, working career, like those doors that I closed, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know. I mm -hmm. just knew I wasn't going to do that anymore. Yeah. Um, but the majority of those life fulfilling and giving That's opportunities deep. came uh, as a result of me just volunteering, yeah. just trying it, just trying it out. Yeah. And that way you will know if you really want to, you know, invest all of your time yeah. uh, as far as with school and getting a degree, like try it out first. Yeah. Find an organization and just, you know, get your hands dirty. And uh, or, and when I say get your hands dirty, I mean, you know, get to serving, yeah. get to serving. Like it's a lot of companies and organizations that their their funding may be a little short, but they still need help. Amen. It's Sound a, it's like a lot church. of schools. Amen. Amen. That need. Volunteers. Yeah. 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 I said that like I said something. Yeah. Good. But, but it is true. true. There are a lot of schools. I was uh, having lunch with a friend the other day. And he was just telling me about all of the disciplinary action, actions that have to take place before they can even teach. Yeah. So you can show up and be a, a classroom mom. Or, I, I don't know how it works now, especially with us being in this little weird space and season. Right. But even with, uh, it may be a mom or it, it, it may not be on a large scale of a school, but you just know that someone needs a helping hand. Yeah. Help. Help, help, help. That is a gift. gift. Helping is a gift. Amen. Yeah, amen. It's in the Bible. This is one of those uh, gifts of the spirit. Amen. Yeah. Helps. You are able to serve. Everybody, it's not easy for people to just go in and help change and make mm -hmm. a difference. But if you know that you have a, 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 a heaviness on your heart toward um, maybe orphans or maybe single moms or maybe a single dad or widow or widow yeah go just go yeah. just go and go with a good attitude don't go trying to reinvent the organization amen, <laughs> amen. just go in and and and, and offer your helping hand amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. all right um what oh. mm -hmm. right. okay well trust trust the process <laughs> and trust the god of the process and trust God to bring their birthright to pass. And uh, I was sharing with Pastor Pat too that Jesus gives us the right to be born again and to have new life in him. Yeah. So don't forfeit your, your birthright to get to know the Lord and be in relationship with him for a temporary fix. This earth and all that we see, it is passing away. On your best day, on your most profitable day, Whatever that thing is, it is just, it. the moment you got it, it started passing away. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to us having a relationship in Jesus Christ, every day is a fresh start. Every mm -hmm. day is a new beginning. And even when we get into his presence, it'll still be fullness of joy and new life. It is just be, it, it is eternal fullness. And I don't know what that look like, but I know I don't want to miss out on it. Amen. Amen. And so be renewed in Christ. And then, therefore, we can experience the birth, the divine birthright, the joy of the divine birthright of being in him. Yeah. You're not really living if you're not really experiencing him, if you're not growing in relationship with him. Mm -hmm. It's many people that have given their life to Christ. You know, they'll say, well, he gave his life to Christ on, on such and such a day. But then the birthright is entering into that relationship every single moment of your life. You experience it. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. That's what I'm saying. So don't forfeit it just for a hardship or a bad moment or a moment of suffering. And by the same token, they're both imposters, success and failure. They're both That's imposters. Good. So don't think that your worst day is your only day and that your best day is your forever day. No, no, no. You treat them both as equal. They are both imposters. They both let off something that is not always true. But when it comes to your birthright in Christ, we, we know that with God, all things are possible, that he holds true to his word, and we want his word to be done to us according to what he has promised us. Amen. Amen. So if you want to be a part of the birthright in Christ Jesus, yes. we're offering an opportunity for you to now 
do do just that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, 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 yeah. Uh, the text says, if you Romans 10, verse 9 says, uh, if you believe in your heart that God raised uh, Jesus from the dead, uh, from the grave, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, it says that you will be saved. It's really that simple. It's not, uh, you don't need a sign, you don't need yeah, the sky to fall yeah. out, to, you know, whatever, anything like that. It's just that simple. No, it can't be that simple. Yes, it is that simple. Believe the report that has been left for us mm. uh, about Christ Jesus and what he has done. Uh, believe the, the historical documentation that has been uh, dictated about what he has done, him dying on the cross, uh, him being crucified, dying on the cross, and, and, resur and rising again, and he'll be coming back uh, again. And if you believe that and you can confess that, uh, you'll be saved. If that's you out there and, th and you want to do that and you really like, I've been trying to do this thing by myself. Mm. And I want to I want to be in the birthright. I want to experience this relationship uh, uh, with, with Christ Jesus. If that's you and that's what you want to do, we're asking you right now to let us know. Let us know by sending us an email. Uh, email us email email us at info at inspiredchurchmemphis.org and just let us know, hey, listen, I want to be a part of the body of Christ. And if you want to be a part of, go ahead, Inspired Church. I was going to say, and, and not only will you be a part of Christ, but you'll also be a part of the church. Like, there are brothers and sisters that's in the faith that will help uh, get you going, and you'll have a place to belong. Right. Uh, because a lot of times we're living in a, in a place where people don't have family anymore. Right. You know, they just kind of out there. Yeah, and so if you want to be a part of the Inspired Church, no matter where you are, because it, it, it can happen now because church is virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to be a part of the Inspired Church, uh, we ask you also to send the same email, uh, send um, uh, a letter or email to us at info at inspiredchurchmemphis.org and let us know that you want to be a part of the body of Christ or mm -hmm. this particular local body uh, uh, here at Inspired Church. Now, if you don't want to, but you have uh, given your life to Christ and you decide you want to be a part of the body as a whole, but you don't know what church you want to be a part of, just let us know, and we'll, we'll help, help you. you. Yes. We'll help you find a, a good Bible-believing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. church who, who loves, yeah, spirit-filled church who loves God and loves the people of God, and we'll help you do that, and we'll walk alongside with you uh, to help you fulfill your destiny and your purpose that God has for you. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, if you have, um, if you're a member of Inspired Church or if you found value in anything that we've said today, and you want to support us financially, uh, we ask you to do so. There are four ways to do so. Uh, those links to be able to do that is, is in the description box. And we would love for you all to uh, support us. We are we're trying to grow. We are trying to grow. So we are looking for more financial supporters uh, to help us with this, with more equipment and uh, other ways to get uh, information out. And uh, we're trying Expansion. to bring along mm -hmm. other people to kind of help us to, uh, to grow. And so your financial support really helps us do that. As always, you know, I always tell you, pray about it, pray about, pray about, pray about how much you should give and to support it for in, uh, in support of Inspired Church. But what I am asking, I'm personally asking, is that whatever that you give, that you give on a regular basis, uh, that way we can kind of know what the budget looks like when people give regularly. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you have already been given and you've, you've been thank given you. regularly, yeah. I want to say thank you and I appreciate uh, the, the help and support that you have given. Uh, if, you've, if you've given at one point on a regular basis and you stop, I want to encourage you to get back to uh, giving again and uh, allowing God to use you to help support this ministry so we can continue to push the gospel out further uh, to the ends of the world. Amen. Uh, next week, we will have our new sermon series. It is entitled A New Beginning, so we don't want you to miss that. Yeah. Also, next week is our first, it's the first Sunday, January 2nd, right? So it'll be the first sermon of the new year, and it will be, uh, we will have in-person service, and that'll be live at 5. So we want you to go out to the website and register for that particular sermon. Uh, sermon. And uh, seat, yes, mm -hmm. seat service. Mm -hmm. uh, seats are limited, so make sure you get out there and uh, register for that, so you can be a part of the very first yeah. 2022 
sermon of the sermon series, A New Beginning. And here I would at also, Church. I would also like to uh, encourage you to bring a friend. Like sometimes you go into a new place, mm -hmm. and then you don't want to go by yourself. So bring a friend to Amen. Inspire Church if you hadn't uh, had the opportunity um, this year to come out. We are asking, I am asking you to come out and also to bring a friend. Make sure he went out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we're going to pray. Uh, and then we'll get out. <laughs> but guess what? what? We got a sick one. I got you. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> you got that one. Uh, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this opportunity you've given to us, oh, Heavenly Father. Uh, we pray that if anyone who has uh, heard the message today, dear God, and they desire to give their lives to Christ, oh, Heavenly Father, we pray that they would have the boldness mm -hmm. uh, to move forward and to go forward and, and, and to do so, uh, that they will believe in their heart and, and confess with their mouth that, yeah. that Jesus is Lord and that you that the, that you raised him uh, from the grave, oh, Heavenly Father, so they can be saved. Uh, we pray that uh, during this holiday season, oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for safety. We pray for that love will be spread uh, abroad, oh, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. We pray that uh, um, that people, if they don't have a, a um, immediate family during this holiday season, dear God, that they will go out to either serve someone or they will mm -hmm. go out and, or they would be invited to be a part of something uh, with an extended family, Heavenly Father. And we just pray for your blessings. We pray for uh, your will be done in our lives. And we want to let you know, dear God, we thank you. We thank you for all yeah. that you've done. Thank you for your birth. Thank you for your life. Thank you for the death. Thank you for the uh, the burial. And we uh, most importantly, thank you for your resurrection. Yeah. And we love you, dear God, for all you've done for us. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Awesome.